Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Deason and Life Coach Joel Elston here. Today is Thursday, May the 24th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for the day. And I'm happy because a lot of really nice things are happening in life. I mean, we got gorgeous weather. I'm going to get out for my favorite thing to do, my bike ride today. We've had good, gorgeous weather the last few days. The book is coming out. That's exciting. I mean, there's just so many good things happening. And Joel, when I first connected with you this morning, I asked, how are things are going? You said, well, it's pretty much the same as yesterday. I said, yeah, isn't that cool? And you said, yeah, it's the way it's supposed yeah. to be. <laughs> well, and, 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 you know, we, we have the rare opportunity of speaking twice this week, which That's I love. Right. And, oh, yeah, me too. And, you know, the, and, and so a lot of people say, well, you know, how's it going today? Well, it's just like yesterday. And, and oh, that's sort of, a, sort of a negative view. But no, not when you're viewing yesterday is awesome, too. You know, that's right. It, it, it's just really good stuff is starting to happen. And it's been happening and, and it's been an evolution. And the fact our our collaborative book has come out and uh, we're, we're actually launching this weekend, the ebook for that's sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, and 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 so, I mean, it, it that, that's a. a in some ways, that's a cumulative effect over how that came to pass. When we first talked several years ago, uh, the very first time, it would be almost hard to imagine us having a book like that being published. So, oh yeah, uh, it's amazing how this how this has all come to pass. It's interesting too. You mentioned that first uh, interview we did uh, roughly five years ago, where it was actually the twelfth episode of the podcast that I'd ever done, and there was something about that that conversation we had that day where the energy was really, really good. It's one of the things that motivated yeah. me, you know, years later when I needed a new co-host to contact you. And I was very pleased when you came on board, but that energy, I, I as you're mentioning it, I'm realizing that energy was for us, for the book, for the podcast and, and our interaction and so forth. That was a seminal event because that energy set the stage and we continued it. I agree. Right, right to this day, you know, I think that's pretty cool. We can actually look back at a particular point in time where the energy was good, and we can kind of see how the path worked out on that one. And and I, I almost guarantee you that, and I, I don't know how to predict where this is going, but I almost guarantee you that in in six months or or uh, a year or, or you know wherever whatever time frame you want to look. We'll be shocked at what happens next and say, wow, remember when we were talking about the, just the book coming out. Now look where we're at now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that, that's the progression. And, 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 and that's such a metaphor to, to where we're going of this is it, you know, the idea that you, you, these things happen and it's so easy to look at life through a rear view mirror and go, you know, that's, I see that point. But so every day when something hit, you don't know how something today, has the potential to be life altering. We did that interview all those years ago. That's right. Uh, it, it did, you know, other than me taking an hour of a work day to talk with you, I didn't know what would lead to all of this. No, I didn't either. I mean, how could we, how can you know that? <laughs> There's no way to know that. Yeah. That's, that's part of the point of yeah. living life to, to, and doing it with as much gusto as you can just to find out how it's going to turn out, just to see how the play is going to, to resolve itself, you know? Sure. Yeah. Now, we also sure. have so, the, uh, that, that, the book coming out, like you mentioned, and uh, the link for those who are interested in the free ebook, and I suspect a lot of people are, um, for those who are interested in the link to the free ebook, that will be posted tomorrow morning, Friday morning, May 25th. As early as I get up, that's how early it's going to be posted. <laughs> and it will appear on the homepage at LOAToday.net. From that point, through the end of day on Monday, and end of day, by the way, beginning and ending is actually measured in Pacific time, even though, Joel, you and I are on the East Coast, it's on West Coast time, because that's where Amazon's um, uh, main office is, and so they, their, their servers are based on West Coast time. So the the special offer will run th actually through Tuesday morning, 3 a.m. Eastern time, but that, that mm -hmm. on the West Coast, that's officially midnight uh, at the end of the day on Monday. Um, so we'll have four days where people can can use that link to get a free copy of the ebook, and then we actually want to take the uh, the time here and, and the opportunity to announce officially. Uh, Wendy and I unofficially announced it yesterday, but uh, officially Tuesday is going to be the launch date of the paper pack version of the book. The paperback actually, I mean, they are the same book. There's really no difference in the content. <laughs> But from an Amazon perspective and from a, a book selling perspective and from, you know, rankings on what the best sellers are and so forth, 
they actually track them separately. So we're going to do two separate launches. And if you're planning to buy the right. paperback, we ask that you hold off. Don't buy the paperback over the weekend. Don't buy it now. Don't buy it over the weekend. Make your purchase on Tuesday because that's going to give us that, that combined oomph that all the purchases made at the same time provide and help give us a nice good push up into the rankings. So uh, please give us a help with that. And, and we love you for the fact that you're going to be buying the book. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, uh, it's an incredible it's sort of a collaborative effect of, of stories of the law of attraction and, and successful use of the concept. And from different coaches' points of view, we're, while we all believe in the same thing, we all sort of come from different backgrounds and have small you know, differences in how we see. So it's a nice contrast to see who uses what and, and you know, just, just from – the, the amazing effect this can have. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I really feel that this type of thing is something that is growing. People are more buying into this concept more and more. And the more examples you can put out there, that the easier it is to see how this works instead of making it some crazy magical thought process that, you know, it, it, is somehow voodoo in some people's mind. It's mm-hmm. just the real simple way of thinking to bring more stuff into your life. Yeah, it really is. And it works very nicely. And it, the thing I was focusing on this morning, Joel, I, I was doing my mirror exercises this morning. And in the mirror exercise, I basically am looking myself in the mirror. And, and you may remember when I first started doing this, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it very long, like five seconds. That was the most I could look into my own eyes. <laughs> but now I can actually do it for yeah. minutes at a time, which is nice. It's a nice change. But that, that mirror exercise, I, I basically was giving myself a pep talk and saying, you know, we just have to get the energy level up. When we get the energy level up and we stay in that high energy level and stay in that high energy feeling and all the, the uh, authors are in that same feeling, man, this book's just going to take off. Because that's what we're yes. all putting out there, you know? And I kept pushing and pushing that. Yes. And, I, and, I, and the funny thing is, I mean, you and I both know this, as the more that you focus on a thought, the stronger the belief in that thought becomes. A belief is a thought that you think over and over again. So that's what I was working on. And I could feel it building up inside me. It was fun. I was actually enjoying it. I mean, two and a half months ago, I would have embarrassed, been embarrassed looking in the mirror at my own self, saying all these things to myself that were you know, so positive. And now I'm feeling so good about it. It's a nice transition. It feels so good now. That's great. And, and you, you know, you have that, that way of thinking or that way of feeling more than anything. If, if, when you get a group of people, one of the, one of the things I love about, uh, the Napoleon Hill and his belief process that he spoke about in Think and Grow Rich and I, I've used to success many times is the, the concept of a mastermind process where you get mm. a group of people. It, it could be three people. It could be 50 people right. that are start you know, collaborating together using the concepts of law of attraction, the amazing things that come from that. And in a sense, this is like a, 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 a mastermind process that we've done. And, you know, that if, if we're all looking in the mirror, so to speak, and we're all thinking that same direction, that there, there isn't any way this can't be a best-selling book. It just really can't help but be that. That's true. And, and it, it will it will touch other people. And, and it, it has that potential to really – you know, the difference between, you know, I, I was looking the other day, there's something like 12 million books available on Amazon or something wow. crazy number. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. And yeah. And the, the, a lot of them are now the way you can publish. A lot of people have just written stories or, or, you know, and, and they're real basic. They don't, yeah, I, there's books on there that have never been remotely advertised. I mean, people never even have mentioned there's people that have written books and just have them up that have, never sold a copy or sold one or two maybe. And I'm sure there's some really good stories or really good books that have never been discovered. And when you look at it, like here's what's happening, getting this out there, the difference between a best selling book and one that hasn't been discovered yet, isn't always the quality of work as much as it is the, the sort of the, the luck of, or the, you know, the attention, who gets the attention? I mean, there, right. uh, Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, talks about the, you know, he, he loved the concept. And by the way, our book is very similar. It's law of attraction based, but mm. you, you have a bunch of different stories in that. And I think that's a, a, a really big point. Uh, but he talks about when they did this, it was, you know, he, they completed the book and it, it nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And and they they were determined to get out there. They kept going and they kept 
you know, making appearances and they kept promoting in every way they could keep it. They kept pushing and pushing and pushing. They really believed in the book. And, and it probably took a year, a year and a half. And then the right person got hold of it. And right. then it just took off crazy. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's the, the you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, his process was everybody said, Oh, you got lucky with that book. And he laughed He goes, well, if luck means, you know, do it working your butt off to get it. They're like, yes, we did get lucky, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it's such an amazing process that the law of attraction brings us to just push in the same direction, believe. And, you know, we, one of the things we wanted to talk about this morning is our topic, you know, the, the inner dialogue, you know, mm-hmm. your, what you tell yourself is, is, is in a sense your reality. And, and it, it, it creates, uh, uh, but by, by, working on your self-worth, what you believe in yourself is such a powerful tool. But, you know, so, so the topic itself is your self-talk determines your self-worth. That's mm-hmm. the, the name of the topic for today. Right. But it, it, it and, and, and we're going to try to break down why that works. And, you know, it, and yesterday we, we mentioned it isn't just about let's have a positive thought. Oh, I want a million dollars and you, you get a million dollars the next <laughs> day. That's not how it works. Uh, it's the same thing with the self-talk. The point of self-talk or the mirror work that you were talking about earlier, where you really, you, you really start reinforcing yourself to yourself. It isn't that really the self-talk that matters as much as it is you're programming the subconscious. That is one way to program the subconscious to believe your self-worth. And then you move forward. Then you move forward with a, Believing what you believe you are, you are, and you know the the idea that if you're confident and you really, uh, I, I I really just enjoy seeing people who are comp. You know, there's a diff- there's a fine line sometimes between uh, character or what have you, and I mean cockiness and and confidence, and uh, it it it's good to have confidence, but when you're cocky, it, it sort of goes to the other side. And there, uh, I'm listening to a, uh, you know, I'm always listening to books. I try to listen to, uh, you know, a book a week. And I'm, you know, my goal is to go through 52 books in, in a year. And I'm actually ahead of that pace. Really? Uh, but wow. there's a guy named, <laughs> yes, I love, I love doing it. There's a guy named, uh, Eric Barker, and he's wrote a book called marking up the wrong tree. Uh, and, it, it, it's where I'm at today, and he he's discussing this this gentleman that practiced. Uh, he he was a, a a master of martial arts, and he was able to focus his energy and knock people out without touching them. Is what wow. he was selling. Yeah, I've seen that, but that's wild. and yeah, and he has it, all of his students. Uh, he, he he they would run toward him. There's videos. They would and he would just put his hands up, but not touching them. And they would fall over. And, and, uh, it was this, you know, he, he really, really strongly believes that he was able to focus his chi, so to speak, uh, and, and, and direct that energy and knock people out. Well, a martial artist, another martial artist, an MMA specialist decided to challenge him and said, you know, uh, I don't believe you. Well, he was highly insulted because he knocks people out without touching them. And he said, okay, challenge him. Well, the MMA defeated him in less than, I think eight seconds or something. He, 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 he just punched the dude in the face and then got him in a submission hold. It was not even close. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, the chi power did not work. Now the entire time it turns out that the guy was so confident in his ability that he really believed he was, knocking people out or knocking them down with his energy. But more importantly, he was, he had sold the people that were being knocked down or knocked out that they were being knocked down. They weren't playing his, they really believed it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so within that, his confidence did, but when he, he got to a point of an irrational confidence, like, okay, here's a 210 pound man. Who's a professional MMA fighter. And and I'm going, he doesn't believe it, it, there, there wasn't a rational thought process. So, you know, the, the, the self-worth and, and that inner dialogue that we have with ourselves, it, you, you walk a line, uh, that, that you, you know, you want to be confident and, and then you get to the cocky and then you get to the over, you know, like a lot of CEOs have so much power 
and they're very confident. They lose touch with reality, and they really believe they are better than. And, and so as I develop this concept of what I'm doing, I want my self-worth to be how, how I, I'm confident at what I do. I believe in what I do. I'm good at what I do. However, I need to walk that line of I am not better than anyone else, nor am I less than anyone else. We are all on that same level, maybe different points in the past. And that's a very important part of this self-talk. It isn't just about pumping yourself up, saying, I'm great. I'm the, I'm the best. No, I'm great. Uh, I, I'm great at being me. But there's a difference between that and I'm just simply great. Does that make sense? Oh, I agree. Totally. In fact, if I try when I'm doing my mirror exercises to simply say I'm great, which I don't do, by the way. But if I, if I tried to do that, I know without even trying it, it wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't feel right, right. because the whole point right. of the mirror exercise is to help me feel better. And just saying I'm great doesn't make me feel better. Whereas saying I love myself, I am a, I'm proud of myself, I feel good about what I'm doing, that makes me feel better. Yes. But if I would just said I'm yes. great, it would be, it'd be so disconnected from any emotion that it wouldn't do anything. Well, and, and that, that's the point. We touched yesterday about the placebo effect and the belief of something working. There, there, you know, a strong self-belief, self, you know, what you, is so important. But again, it, it's like everything else in life is there's a balance. You know, the idea that, you know, the I want to be rich, I want to be rich mentality that so many attracts so many people to the concepts of law of attraction. Actually, they get frustrated because it doesn't work the way they think it's supposed to work. Mm hmm when every day of your life is focused on, I just simply want to be rich, want to be rich. The, the resistance is I, I am not rich and I don't have that ability. It's an unattainable thing for me. And, and so you, you look at it from a different lens and you're actually having a reverse effect. Right. The, the concept of living in, you know, I, I don't look at myself as rich or, or I, I, I have an abundance. I have all I need. I'm in a wonderful financial shape. I love my life. I get to do what I, that's how I look at it. I'm not worried about money. And when I'm not worried about that, I have plenty of money. I, I'm not, I don't need to get into I'm rich or better than, or I've, I've worked very hard to get where I'm at. I'm very, I'm very pleased with where I'm at. But at the same time, I, I, I live in an abundance and, and I, I have, I have everything I need, every, pretty much everything I want. And that is a healthy place for me to live in. It's not that I'm, you know, just, oh, I'm rich. It's just, you know, because I'm great or rich, it's, that's not how I view it. I view it as I have an abundance uh, and, and I live with a mindset of abundance. But when, I, when, you're, when you're desperate for money, when you're viewing it and you come into the law of attraction to attract money, you don't realize the resistance you're placing with doing that. And that's where that, that inner dialogue becomes such an important factor. It's not just the inner dialogue or the self-talk determining your self-worth. That's the main topic here. But it's it's what are you really telling yourself in that self talk that matters? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely true. In fact, that's also one of the motivations behind the book. I mean, when uh, I first conceived of the idea of collecting all of these manifestation stories, these stories of how people experienced and even leveraged the use of the law of attraction in their lives to produce some amazing results, I figured that would have a number of effects. First and foremost, it would be fun. It would be entertaining to, to hear and read the stories, right? And just to see what it was that, right. that people um, had managed to bring into their lives by changing their, their set point, by changing their focus and perspective to a more positive perspective. I also knew that if we can put a book out like that and, and when it takes hold of the popular um, mental awareness, so to speak, and, and more and more people start to, to read it and to take advantage of it, it was going to provide, I believed, a very positive influence to encourage people to feel better about themselves and to encourage people to feel like they can let go of certain resistances, even if they don't know that they're holding them, whether it's about money or anything else. It doesn't matter what the resistance is about. What matters is Absolutely. noticing it and releasing it. So as yes. that idea took hold in me and I started spreading it with, uh, like you said, with life coaches predominantly, because that's who most of the authors are, um, I got great reaction. People were saying, oh, what a wonderful idea that is, because they, as life coaches, also recognize the great power in not only shifting our perspective, but feeling good about ourselves. And if you can get feel good about yourself by reading about the exploits of others, then great. 
you know, you, you do it with a book a week, more than a book a week. I still don't know how you do that, but, but you do it with a book a week. That's really cool. You see, you, you read and hear about 52 or more different perspectives every year just by doing your book a week thing. That's great. You're picking up the well, best of the best. It, well, and, yeah, and it help it helps. And, and, and again, I, I always like to have truth and honesty when I, I share, I listen, I, I belong to audible.com. So I listen when I'm in my car, I'm listening to books. When I'm, uh, when I get up in the morning, I don't turn on a TV. I, I start playing wow. my book, uh, in well, my free clever. time, that's I listen though. to my book. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's a good way and to do so, it. And when I, yeah, like, like, uh, today in my work day, I'll have probably a 45 minute break, uh, around noon and I will put on my headset at work while I'm eating some lunch and take in, you know, not, not fall asleep, but almost listen to the book in a meditative state mm -hmm. and, and really absorb that. So I, I really enjoy, and all my books are b basically the same thing. I, I'm not, I don't listen to any fiction. I, I, I listen to you know, the majority of the stuff, like, you know, the five second rule of the book is a really great book about taking action you know, a lot of, uh, you know, think and grow rich kind of mentality, you know, you're the placebo, all those books are, are the law, some form or fashion of law of attraction, maybe on the fringe of it sometimes, self-help books maybe is a better term, mm -hmm. but I, I gather a lot of hearing everybody's perspective and it's sort of this book that I'm, I'm talking about right now, uh, the, the gentleman that, that wrote this incredible concept that it, it isn't, you know, it's, it's sort of about rethinking. Like he, he talks about different people in different roles. And, you know, that he, today, the part of the book that he was talking about is that he was a lady that feels no pain mm. and she is immune to pain. And, and, and there's a scientific, there's very few people that have that. Uh, but she, she literally feels no pain. Well, that's a great thing. Most people would think, but she's very limited in what she can do. Because she she damages herself all the time, and so she she her life is very confined because she doesn't know when her, she hurts. She doesn't. So while not feeling pain may be perceived as a, a greatness on some level, it's also a very dangerous way to live. Most people that have this gene or or this I don't know if it's a gene, but have this uh, this condition where they don't feel pain is they die. They have a, their life expectancy is half of what a, a normal human is. Because pain is, while it's viewed as such a negative, it is a very effective tool to say, wait a minute, you need to stop that. Mm. And, and so that, again, learning, learning to listen to other points of view and, and, and l listen to everything out there and adjusting that your self-worth by programming the stuff. Again, I, 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 I always talk about uh, I'm as bad as a vegan almost uh, talking about not listening to the news. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, uh, you're not a vegan at all. So yeah, I was first thing to do, hi, I'm a vegan. Uh, it, it, it's the same thing with, uh, you know, being, a, but I don't listen to the news. And so I have taken control of my own programming. I program myself, uh, by, by listening to the books that I listen to and surrounding myself with the people I do and working on my self talk. If I find myself doubting myself or I find anxiety, uh, if I find myself feeling anxious, identifying the emotion that I'm feeling and under and trying to understand where that is coming from. Uh, occasionally, I'll have sort of this minor anxiety, almost uh, unidentifiable, what are you anxious about? I will take a moment, use my, my self-talk to remind myself that I'm in a great place in life. I will never allow that anxious or anxiety feeling to take over. Even if I were to, you know, sometimes it's just unidentifiable. I mean, you don't know why. Um, and, and sometimes I don't know why. Other times I say, oh, yes, this happened. I can see where that, that, that's affecting me. And I need to work on that. But self-talk is our, our really the, probably the strongest tool we have available in the implementation of the law of attraction. The actual people want to know how to use it. The self-talk piece is the process of reprogramming the, the subconscious and adjusting the emotions in the way that's attracting what we want versus rejecting or, or resisting what we want. Yeah, right. And and one of the things that has amazed me, and I, I know I've returned to this theme repeatedly over the years, I continue to be amazed at the ability of the human animal 
to not be aware of the nature of his own self-talk. Have you? I'm sure you've noticed that as a, as a therapist, but we just oh sure. It, 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 I mean, people just say stuff, and and they're saying stuff that's usually negative, and they don't know that it's negative. I know I did that. I, I had to be pointed out to me that I was talking negatively. My wife did it you know, a little over ten years ago. She pointed it out to me, and, and she did it very nicely, but she did. And, and, and my first reaction was, no, I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I really didn't. I yeah. wasn't aware of it. I just didn't know it. Right. And, and that, that piece is, is so prevalent, just what you're saying. I mean, it, it's such a prevalent way of thinking. Uh, you, you know, uh, we all have this... Uh, like, like you're saying, this, this, this self-talk, inner dialogue, all that stuff that happens. And we don't realize that from a young age, from a young concept of, of us, we, we put ourselves in this position, unfortunately, where we don't realize, because we were programmed, to anticipate the worst, to, to scan the horizon for what can go wrong. Somehow... You know, I see that with parents all the time with their kids, unintentionally helping program the kids to look for the fear, look for the the negative, look for what's going to go wrong, versus, yeah, let's 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 change that way of thinking. And one one of the uh, things that if I had a magic wand, one of the probably about sixth or seventh grade when when kids are able to sort of comprehend this seems to me i would i would add a class about this the the value of self talk there is no better mental health tool period than learning positive self talk i i believe that almost and and this is a stretch because there is some biological real reasons why people have mental illness but for the majority of mental illness, I think it begins with negative or, or destructive self-talk. And most of the time, they have no clue it's negative or self-destructing. Right. We, we should probably, in, in uh, you know, complete, uh, being, being a, a complete prevent, presenter of the, the concept, we should actually give an example. What are we talking about when we say negative self-talk? What is it, how, how do we know that, that a, a self-talk is negative? Okay, well, if, if, a, if it, a lot of times you, you don't even recognize it because it's an inner voice talking to you. Okay, here, here, here's an example of a beginning process of negative self-talk. Um, I'm, I'm applying for a job today. Um, I'm not qualified. God, I mean, you know, I have a, I have a criminal record. I have, you know, my last job I left and, and you start coming up internally with all the things that are going to easily be objected to. And then you then sit down and you interview with the person and you subconsciously are having this negative self-talk and it becomes self-fulfilling. You don't realize it's affecting your energy, the energy that the other person, when you sit down to interview with somebody, your words are important clearly. But more importantly, in my mind, is the idea that you are tra you are letting them feel your energy. And when you sit down with somebody and your energy is high, it overcomes so much more than is on your resume. And the opposite is when your energy is low, it, it defeats no matter what's on your resume. And so when you find yourself you know, sitting there, it, it doesn't necessarily, it, when you're looking at objections of why something won't work or why you're not successful or, you know, one of the most uncomfortable things to do is, it, it, whatever your most uncomfortable thing to do is almost always the thing that you should do the most. <laughs> you know, the idea of, you know, uh, like, like if, you know, the, the simplest thing to do, I, I, if, if somebody's looking for a job right now, and I don't, I don't like the word networking because it sounds so uh, uh, formal, but getting out and mingling, if you, ha if you want something in a field, a certain field, find, there's always groups of people in that field somewhere. Go start attending the meetings. Go start attending whatever support groups or whatever and, 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 and mingle and meet people. And, and, you know, the, I always use the concept too that, that the job, like a job for, is advertised in the newspaper. Any job that makes it to advertising in the newspaper in my mind, means that nobody working at that company knew anybody that wanted that job. So, but because what that's how jobs are fulfilled within, do you know anybody that would want this job? 
I can't find anybody that wants this job, so I got to go advertise to the outside world. So the inside track on jobs is important. So that self dialogue of I need to get out there, I need to go meet people, I need to shake hands. Well, most people that horrifies most people. That concept, you know, the, the, you know, it, it, public speaking, for example, horrifies most people. Uh, but Toastmasters is a wonderful organization which helps people who have trouble uh, speaking, and also is a great place to network. So whatever your objection is, when you start your inner dialogue, being able to confront that is very important. I, I, you know, I've I've walked into uh, situations before I, I I don't interview for jobs anymore, but uh, back when I would interview for jobs, especially after having my criminal conviction, uh, I I would, you know, okay, that's the first thing they're going to find out, or they're going to, when they ask that question, do a, you know, I'm, I'm torn, do I tell the truth? And then they just dismiss me, or do I actually lie? And then when they see what a good job I've done, then they're going to, you know, what are they going to do? So I had had that dilemma a lot of times, and I I I, I learned to turn that into, uh, as I, you heard me say, I've, I've I've turned that into a credential now. Mm. When I'm telling my story and telling what I want to do, I, I I did consulting work for this firm in South Carolina that had a, a treatment center of a uh, of a for really sexually aggressive boys. And uh, it, it was a horribly run facility that was about to be shut down. And they asked me to come in and, and see if I could consult with them or at least maybe even become a, you know, a temporary director to turn things around. So one of the first things I said, I said, before we begin, I said, I want to get something out of the way. So for those of you that, know, that do not know my entire story, I was convicted of a crime due to my addiction 15 years ago. Uh, I want to get that on the table. Uh, so I, I, and, and, and then I begin to tell them, ask questions, tell them what I want to do. By the end of the interview or the process that we were going through, they offered me the job. I turned them down, uh, but they offered me the job and they said that actually makes you more qualified for working with these kids that you could relate to them more. Mm. Uh, it, it was, I turned a negative into a positive and that inner dialogue for so long defeated me and did not allow me to put that out in front. And and if you, most of us have that going on. So working on that inner dialogue, programming it in a way that is, is fitting the situation and identifying as we were looking at identifying when it goes negative and, and that becomes a skill unto itself. You develop that because there's almost the concept that is, you know, there's, positive thought, there's neutral thought, and there's negative thought. A lot of people, including me, operate that neutral is basically negative. It is. It's the pot. Yeah. And, and so, so really, two out of the three are, are not working in our favor, whereas adjusting things to positive are absolutely the, the, the key to doing this. But this takes a skill set. Like you're saying, you didn't even know you were thinking negatively for so long. Right. But it, it or, or speaking negatively internally uh, and, until you break it down. But but what are you thinking right now? The reason that most people are listening to this show or this podcast is they're wanting to change something in their life, uh, that they, they want to attract something. They, they like the concept. They relate to the concept. But how do I implement it? And that is the understanding. You know, what are you thinking? At the end of the day, the emotions that you feel when you think, it causes the attraction. That's the that's the catalyst for the law of attraction. And I, I want so to address two things becomes, there. I, I want to address two points there sure. before we move on. Because well, first of all, you managed sure. to answer a question before I could even raise it. I thought that was pretty cool, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. <laughs> but uh, the other was you mentioned the idea of positive, neutral, and negative, and that neutral is actually negative. And there's an example that I think of whenever somebody gets confused about that that I find really helps illustrate it, and that is how a legislature works. When a legislature, the easiest one to think of is the U.S. Senate because there are 100 people, so it's a nice round number. Um, in the U.S. Senate, if you have 49 people who vote yes and 49 people who vote no and two people who abstain or don't vote, the, mo the motion is defeated because it didn't get 50% plus one. It has to have 51 votes in favor in order for the bill to pass. So really, right. the abstention votes or the no votes are counting as if they were no votes. They're being counted as no's. 
And when you look at it that way, now it starts to make more sense. Well, how can something neutral be a no? Well, actually, it isn't a yes, and that's what makes it a no. There's really only two things. Right. There's only yes or no. Neutral is kind of our nice way. It's our politically correct way of saying, well, I'm negative, but I'm not really all that negative. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know? Yes. And the other thing I wanted to mention yes. is the question that you answered before I even asked it. <laughs> I love this. The, the question I was going to ask you is, well, how about somebody who says, yeah, but I'm just being realistic. And you answered it beautifully, but I want to bring it up in order. So. <laughs> I'm just being realistic when I say I'm not qualified. I'm just being realistic when I say that I really can't get this job. I, I, I really don't have the ability to get this job. I'm being realistic. Right. Well, and, and, and it, you know, it, 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 here, here's sort of the conundrum of that way of thinking. I'm just being realistic. Well, it's your realistic thought that's creating the inability. That's the problem, period. And, and that, that's, the, that, that's the hard thing to grasp when people are, are looking at it that way, you know, it, it, it's, it's that here, here I am, I'm living in this incredible world where so much is going on where I'm not qualified to do this or, and, and, and that's picked up on, I mean, it, it, it really is. People pick up on that and, and that drives them. So you, when you really believe it, when you really say, well, I'm, I'm just be that anytime I hear somebody just being realistic, that is that point that, most people get defeated. Well, realistically, I can't do this. So that energy, then why are you applying for the job in the first place? Why, what are you doing mm -hmm. at that point? You need to apply the jobs that you only realistically believe you can do. But the truth is what you really believe you can do is, you know, you know, I, I have a, a great example of this, Walt. There's a gentleman and in, in, I, I don't recommend this because it's certainly not a, a, you know, a normal way to do things. But he was a, a student of neuroscience. I mean, he is brilliant. And uh, he, he, he really believed in, you know, a lot of the stem cell research. And, and there's a pharmaceutical company, Biogen. Uh, and and it, it's one of the companies like Biogen. It wasn't actually Biogen. Uh, but it, it, it was advertising for a sales rep for one of its brain drugs. And... Uh, it, it was a really high, it wasn't your typical pharmaceutical. They wanted somebody with a doctorate in neuroscience and all this other stuff. Well, this guy was, is the leader in his field, but he doesn't have a doctorate. He didn't have a master's degree. He just is, he, <laughs> he's a bit autistic on some level. And, 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 and I mean that in a very positive way right. and just knows everything there is to know about the brain. So he sits down with them and he interviews and he, he, Basically, I guess there's no other way to put it. He lies about his doctorate, but they're oh. so impressed with him that they hire him. Mm -hmm. And then about three months later into the process, of course, when they're demanding the due diligence, he gets the email, said, we're unable to verify your credentials. Uh, can you please provide them for us? And right. he finally said, uh, you know, I don't want to drag you along anymore. I, I, I did lie, but I needed to get to get to see what I can do. Well, they actually had a big meeting and he knew more than anybody about this topic. He yeah. was the best person for the job. Mm -hmm. They let him keep the job. Wow. And he really believed he was qualified and he was. And, and again, I'm not recommending that you go lie about your credentials. I'm just using the example of somebody that really believed in what he did and, and backed it up. So that, you know, he ended up with this $200,000 a year job with basically a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pretty cool. And, and, and that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty good in that sense. And yeah. so within all of this, believing makes the sense. Believing is what drives us. And it's that realistic, quote unquote, point of view that is a grounding negative effect that appears to be neutral. Yeah, it really is. In fact, as you were saying that, even leading up to when you were saying that, a thought occurred to me that I am sure never occurs to someone who says, well, I'm just being realistic. And that is... We never use that phrase about something good, do we? We never say, well, it's a beautiful day, but I'm just being realistic. <laughs> so it's ludicrous right. to even right. think that, you know? Well, you know, I, I just I just won the lottery, but I'm just being realistic. We never think of right. it that way. <laughs> well, well, it, 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 well, it's funny you said I have this, this uh, I finally told him last night, one of, one of our uh, friends that, you know, my, my son Justin does Taekwondo, um, 
great guy uh, that, that that runs it, and and there's a gentleman there that his son is also there, and he has this this habit of saying not to be offensive, and yeah, then he makes right. a statement. <laughs> I I pointed out to him yesterday that every single time you say that, whatever follows is offensive. You don't make it inoffensive by disclaimer that it not to be offensive. It's offensive. Exactly. Uh, And and it's that same. It's that same thing, Walt. It's well. I'm just being realistic. No, you're 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 determining why it won't work. You know the the idea that. I remember listening to a, a, a recording of Bill Gates and before Microsoft even had their first legitimate product. And they, they, he was talking to the uh, sort of a concept person about, uh, you know, what he envisioned. And he was talking about one day, everyone will have a computer in their home and they'll all be connected and we'll talk and people will be able to, to conduct business on the computer and, and, and people were laughing at him. They, there was just nothing, there was no reason to believe that was possible. And then he goes further and he says, I'll take it even further. One day, everybody will have a computer that's handheld and will be a hundred times more powerful than anything we already have. Well, that's not realistic. <laughs> that's not that's not realistic. <laughs> that's and right. That, that's crazy. You're talking Star Trek, you know. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. In fact, you you watch the 1968 version of Star Trek, and our cell phones are far superior than their communicators, which we thought were outrageous back then. Yeah. And, and we're way past that. And, and and so he he saw that vision. So if Bill Gates would have bought into the fact that it's not realistic, then we wouldn't have all of this and, and 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 that that's everything that that takes place and i'm so you know i get so excited when people understand i i i understand we have to first of all i understand we have to pay our bills walt we have to go to work we have to do so i'm not saying there's not a a a, a place of being realistic but when you use that as a defeating mechanism of why something won't work well that won't work well when somebody else goes out and does it uh, you're going to look, you're going to feel really bad. You know, I'm sure we all have ideas that somebody at some point made millions of dollars off of, you know, it, it, it's like you, you at least had the general concept. You know, every, every day that, that every time I ever take an Uber, I'm going, how did I not think of this? Oh my gosh. It's so simple. You know, it's such an mm-hmm. easy concept. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I want to smooth some feathers over too, because there are probably going to be some listeners out there saying it wasn't Bill Gates who invented the the, the smartphone; it was Steve Jobs. And yes, yes, it was Steve okay. Jobs. We're, we're using okay. Bill Gates kind of metaphorically, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, you're right. It was I, actually said, Steve Jobs, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Steve Steve Jobs invented it, but actually, Bill Gates mentioned it years before Steve Jobs invented it. Right. Yes. He he mentioned he mentioned the concept of a handheld computer. And uh, uh, Bill and, and Steve Jobs made it happen. That's right. Um, yeah, you know, those the the and, and, and again, you're right. Dude, especially the the Apple versus uh, you know the the other side. You know that that debate's always big. Oh, uh, yeah. But but you know, but but staying away from you know the 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 concepts of of what is realistic and and you know finding that balance because that inner dialogue. Is, is unfortunately has become a way of talking ourselves out of doing things or, or, or talking ourselves out of being confident or talking ourselves out of, it's almost like, well, let me protect myself by quote unquote being real, realistic or, or somehow I'm going to protect myself by looking at the negative or what could go wrong. Yeah, isn't that interesting how we and, do that? We, we don't even think about it, but boy, yeah. do we do that rarely? Yes. Yes. Let me, let me, if somehow there's this, this idea that, well, if, if I mentally prepare for, you know, I, I hear this all the time from people. I, I think about what's the worst thing that can happen. And then when it happens, I'm not shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, okay. <laughs> that, that's what it is, isn't it? It's, okay. it's a way of like putting a buffer in. Oh, okay. It finally right. happened. Well, that wasn't so bad. I guess I can tolerate another one. Bring me another one. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, that I, I don't, again, it, it, it gets handed down. You know, one of the, one of the factors that I'm, when I'm working with parents and, you know, it, a lot of times parents are telling us, telling their kids, well, I don't want them to be disappointed. I want them to be realistic in their goals. 
Mm. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, I want them to be unrealistic in the goal. <laughs> I want right. them to think way beyond. Uh, you know, yes, I do know they need to learn how to add, you know, four plus four. I do understand that. I do. And they do need knowledge on how. To, but I want them to think differently, think without limits. There is nothing out there that is not obtainable. If you can envision it, it's there. That's the exciting thing about our life. I wake, you know, you know, I wake up every day uh, and feel like I really believe this. I think we live in the greatest time in the history of our world. We have, I have access to every bit of information that's ever existed on the planet. I find that exciting. Sure. I, I have, I, I can access that by getting my Steve Jobs slash Bill Gates phone <laughs> to, uh, uh, to, to just bring it up to me right away. I, I, I have all of it. And I love that. Uh, to me, that's such an exciting thing to have. Okay. So with that being said, I live in a world where I wake up believing that this is the perfect time to be alive. And yet that's, there's people that cool. wake up every day going, it's the end of times. It's worse. Things are bad. They're falling apart. You know, it, it's just read the news, watch the news. It, it, it's, it's just things are really bad right now. Isn't it interesting, and too, that, that you know, when, when people say that things are falling apart, they never actually fall apart. You ever right. notice that? They, they, the things don't actually right. fall apart. It's amazing. You know, the, the world keeps right. spinning. The, the seasons keep coming. The sun comes up in the morning and sets at night. It doesn't stop. The earth hasn't been, right. be, been like devoid of life because of, you know, some environmental change. The, uh, the, the world of, uh, of religion hasn't completely died because some particular policy wasn't followed. I mean, it, it, it's not falling apart. It, it somehow continues no. to hold together. Well, it, it's evolving, and it makes people uncomfortable. It, it, the evolution of things make people uncomfortable, and it, because it's different, it, it's it's not what they're used to. And so, it, you know, the the idea that whether whether it's you know in I I, I I'm not going to talk any religious stuff or, or offend anyone with that. But, you know, the concepts. Well, my religion's under attack, or this is under attack. Well, if your religion is strong enough and you really, you, nobody can attack it. You know, yeah, it's like exactly. when people say the law of attract, the law, when people say the law of attraction doesn't work, Joel, you're, you're just, you're, you're not thinking rationally. What you're talking about is, is harmful to some people. I go, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I factually know the law of attraction works because it's worked for me and it continues to work for me, period. It, 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 it's, it's actually a fact for me. And, and, you know, the, I, I don't need to debate the gravity work for me. Gravity works for everybody. I think law of attraction works for everybody. Whether you believe it works or not is totally up to you. I can't force you to believe it. No, we want to try it. Because it's, yeah, no, I, this is us, us sharing stuff. And, and even within the spectrum of the law of attraction, I, the, you know, we get up to certain places with, you know, in, in, in my study of metaf metaphysics, because I'm working on my, my doctorate right now in metaphysics. There are some things on the of the line of metaphysics that I'm like, okay, that's just one step over the line there. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's you know, the, a lot a lot of metaphysics include you know alien abduction concepts and all the other stuff, and and I'm like, okay, let's not get too wacky with this. <laughs> but you know, it, 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 it's like, okay, well, Joel, you're wacky on your stuff, but anybody, and I I realize that it, it's it's like the old analogy that. You know, there's two drivers out. There's two sets of drivers out there when you're driving on the road. There's, you know, somebody who passes you is driving like a bat out of hell. And somebody who's slower than you is like, oh, my God, they're just delaying traffic. You're the only one doing it perfectly mm -hmm. from your perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the truth is, it's, it's, you know, they're saying the same thing about you. Uh, and, and so it's the same thing within all this. But what we're attracting or where we're at is in our control. And, and by focusing our inner dialogue to the positive belief system, this, you know, like you said, things aren't going to fall apart. I think they're falling together. I think they, <laughs> things are falling together. They're evolving. Things do change. Now, it doesn't necessarily match what everybody wants to happen or they think that wants to happen. It, it, it's like I saw this big debate the other day. And, and it's amazing how things tend to fall into a perceived conservative or liberal 
uh, view. Right. But a lot of schools are doing away with cursive handwriting. You know, well, they're, they're not teaching it. Anymore. I, I, I have to admit, I'm amazed that they're teaching handwriting at all. <laughs> right. Well, it, it, and so, there, and and it, and again, it, it's almost been more of the when I say this, more of the uh, uh, it, at least from my observation. The traditional conservatives are like, you must teach uh, old school cursive handwriting. You must. And then the newer people are like, why? I mean, it, it, everybody types. Nobody even writes things by hand anymore. I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's just sort of, you know, so you hear, hear both sides, right? And so, you know, again, within that spectrum of that, it is, it, we're losing all of our values. Mm. Because we don't know cursive, how will people read the the you know our constitution if they can't? I mean that's one of the things I read. And I go, uh, they probably can find a printed copy and on, <laughs> online pretty easily, or you know you will probably get several of those. But but again, they're they're looking at it. So you know, and from my perspective, is I agree. Why, why are we wasting a moment? I would much rather spend what would be spent on teaching somebody a cursive handwriting, cursive handwriting is like to me, like Latin, why do you need it in today's world? But it, a lot of people think that that's one of the things they believe things are falling apart. They need to stick to the fundamentals. Well, that's not the fundamental. That's, that's just a way <laughs> of communicating. When everybody used to write by hand, that is what you had to do. I mean, I've always had horrible handwriting. Uh, in, in over the years, because I type everything or I have somebody that types it for me, my handwriting has gotten even worse. I mean, it's terrible. So my my cursive is unreadable. My printing is just a step behind that. Um, so I, you know, I type everything. So I I, I don't, but I, that's not a negative in my life. So it, you can find anything to freak out about. And, oh, you uh, can. Yeah. It, it, I mean, you mentioned you, know, you mentioned and, and conservatives who are into. Oh yeah, you mentioned conservatives who are you know, freaked out about. Well, you got to learn how to do handwriting because you got to know how to uh, you know read the Constitution, and I think that's a great example of perspective. Because when I pay attention to how conservatives or liberals, for that matter, really anybody, how they uh, understand what their perspective is on the Constitution, I often wonder if I'm reading the same document. Because right. they come up with interpretations, and I look at it like, what the bleep are you talking about? Here's what it says, and here's what you're saying it says, and like, what? Well, perspective is everything. And I, I had a real personal yeah. experience with that yesterday. After the podcast that I did with Wendy, I commented to her that, you know, we have the theme music at the beginning and the end of the podcast, right? And I commented to her, I was amazed how it depended on what my mood was at the end of a podcast. If my mood was really high... The music sounds energized and fast and moving along. And if my mood is like, okay, not bad, just, you know, not just like in the lower end of the positive range, it seems soft and gentle. It's the same music, but I see it differently just because of my perspective at that moment in time. I mean, that, that really caught my attention. Like the same music, but I experience it differently depending on how I feel. I, I have. The perfect example in my life for that, and I, you, you would never have guessed at the beginning of the show today, I'm going to use the movie The Blues Brothers as okay. an example. <laughs> All right. but, but it's the perfect <laughs> analogy. When when The Blues Brothers, I was very young when The Blues Brothers first came out, and I went yeah. on a date with a, a, sort of an unintentional date. Uh, I, I was sort of, you know, I, I asked this young lady to go to see the movie with me, I, and I was actually about, I, I was in this long story, but I didn't want to go to the movies with this young lady. Okay. We go see the Blues Brothers, and I sat there and I'm like, I didn't want to be there with her. She, she, not her, her. You know, she just was somebody that that I didn't realize she was very negative at the time, but I didn't understand why that was my. I didn't like to be around her, mm-hmm. and so we, I watched the movie and said. Everybody asked me how the movie was. It was okay. I was sort of stupid. Um, <laughs> that 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 was my perspective. It, it was like, yeah, well, probably a few weeks later, several buddies were, of, of were like, you know, we're going out. We're going to see another movie. Well, that was sold out. So they said, let's go see the Blues Brothers. I said, God, it's not that good. I saw it already. They were all going to go whether I went or not. So I said, okay, I'll just go in and see it again. One of the greatest movies of all time. <laughs> it was it, I, I've watched it. I have a copy of it. It's a great movie. I know. I remember lines from the movie to this day. 
I, I quote them often in a joking way with my friends. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's just such a great movie. But again, I viewed the first time I viewed the movie, it was with a negative mindset. It yes. was a perspective that, that was who I run, just like you're talking about the music. At the end of the show, you know, and, and I only do this once a week, so I, I usually, so all the time, every time I hear it, I'm like, wow, that's sort of, yeah, that's good. That's a, you know, boom, boom, that's a great <laughs> signal. It's sort of a, ah, you know, we, were, we have all this positive that we're talking about. We feel great. All of a sudden that music comes on. It's like a great climax to 99% of the shows we do. Um, so it, 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 again, how you're listening to that it is all determined everything that goes on in your life. If you think about great times and in, in your life and what you associate with that, uh, it, it's because how you were feeling that made you view things a certain way. I, as again, we live in amazing times, Walt. I mean, it's just amazing. And I'm finding I find more and more people are coming to the law of attraction concepts, the more of the metaphysical belief systems. And, and, and it doesn't mean you can't be religious and believe in God. It's a separate thing, but it, it, it this is exciting. I mean, we, we, I posted a, a video earlier today. You mentioned before the show, uh, and it, it, I don't know why this fascinated me because I, it, again, it's on the edge of the metaphysics that I study, but there's a video. Uh, it's on my, my Facebook page if anybody wants to see it. it it's, they, they had, they captured light with a camera that can view things at a trillion frames per second. Yeah, unbelievable. Just amazing. And they can, they can slow it down so much that you, and they, there's a Coca Cola bottle that, that they turn a, a beam of light on and turn it off. And you can literally see the light. It's, it slows light down where you can see it travel. Mm. I, I, I just find that just fascinating. And people go, why? Well, it just is. I mean, well, it's the I, first I time I've ever seen a I, photon. I, I mean, you can actually see a photon passing through the yeah. bottle. And the thing that's really brilliantly lit is the photon. The bottle actually looks dark. By comparison, yeah. But as the photon yeah. passes through the bottle, you can see how it's lighting the bottle, and you can you can kind of visualize how well when it happens at full speed. What we're really seeing is the whole bottle illuminated by these photons passing through it. Well, shoot, right? That's a it, cool thing. Yeah, it it it's such a beautiful image to me, and just like you're talking about, it it, it it's I'm, again I'm fascinated by that. I find that amazing. The other people are going to go, eh. Whatever. Well, <laughs> that's why I think we live in amazing times. I mean, what I like is not necessarily what you like. Exactly. And when people are viewing the world as everything's falling apart, their world is falling apart, not because of any outside forces. It's because they believe it's falling apart. Yes. Or if you believe it's an amazing time to be alive, it's an amazing time to be alive. It is. Both ways are true. Yeah, that's how it is. That the same Absolutely. music can can appear to be fast or slow depending on what mood I'm in when I hear it. And it does seem. I mean, we're yeah. talking like a little bit. When it feels really, really good, it feels like it's flying like super fast. Yes. And when I'm in the lower yes. mood, it feels like it's just laconically moving along. I mean, it really feels that yes. different. It's amazing. Just amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so it, it's really good. I want to remind everybody. Uh, we have the the free ebook available this week. Uh, LOA Today's uh, page, my Facebook page, any of our co-hosts' Facebook page should have it on it if we're doing the right thing. Uh, and next Tuesday, we're going to be having the the book. It, it is available now, but we would prefer you wait to Tuesday to buy it. It'll help with our analytics and and all that as we as we move forward. Uh, we'll be talking more about the book, and something tells me there'll be another book down the road, too. I think there's going to be. Actually, there is a page at the end for people to submit their own Law of Attraction stories, and I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of email off of that one. So, yeah, there is going to be another book. You can almost bet on it. Joel, this is yeah. great. Two Joels in one week. I love that. So thank you so much for sitting in for Cindy uh, yesterday and for doing the show today. Walt, I appreciate it. I look forward to that really fast music right now. There we go. Okay, and we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.